what's going on everybody this is G the Hyper Sapien and in this video we're going to have a look at Warhammer Underworld's Beast Grave Ripper's Snarl Fangs. Now this is an awesome, I love the Underworld's box art just the way they do it it's just amazing look at that I've always loved goblins and wolf riders I used to collect orcs and goblins back in the day for fantasy and they were so basic the goblins not so much but the wolves were kind of they all looked the same they just had this one pose maybe two pose maybe one looking like it was slightly running more than the other but there wasn't much difference to them but I still loved them I still loved painting for you know putting some shade or ink or wash into it and then dry brushing over I absolutely love wolves and there's just something about goblin wolf riders and on the side here just has some instructions easy to build kits no glue required I'd still recommend a bit of glue just you don't want them somehow coming apart even though they might not but just saves that hassle I haven't played Warhammer Underworlds unfortunately, seems like an amazing game, but you construct your deck, defeat your rivals, Ripper's Snarl Fang prowl the tunnels of Beast Grave looking for prey, upgrade Warhammer Underworlds with the Ripper's Snarl Fangs expansion containing the Ripper's Snarl Fangs warband and 60 unique cards to enhance your fighters. This pack provides new tactics and challenges for Warhammer Underworld's Beast Grave. As you can see, you can find them on Facebook. There's a Warhammer Underworlds. Also, there's some groups for Warhammer Underworlds that you can look into. So this includes three easy-to-build Citadel miniatures. Miniature showing at actual size right here. Ripper Narc Bad. I love how it's got sort of armor on the wolf as well. It's nuts. It's got all these little wounds or scars, I guess, over him. Even his eye looks like it's gouged out with a wound over it. They're all, then they're not fresh wounds. They're obviously scars that have been around for a while. How much detail does his mouth have? Like that row of teeth, the gum lining. Even has that part that canines have with that sort of upper black lip love it has a couple of earrings it's just sick but yeah these just bring back so many memories it's they've translated the old warhammer wolf riders to know quite well i love these mongolian looking hats they have it's just great so the contents, you get three fighters, three fighter cards, 32 Ripper's Snarl Fangs, and 28 Universal Upgrade, Gambit, and Objective cards. So the miniatures are supplied unpainted. Contents may vary from these shown. Yeah, what amazing looking miniatures. I love how dynamic the pose are. They look like they're running or come into a halt just I absolutely love these one with a bow looks like he's got a spear and then you've got the old sword and shield action let's let's bust this open Okay, so we'll try that again. Let's bust this open. We'll have a look. We have this little tray. Oh, it's hair and everything, even though this was a sealed box. Hair and dust always on everything. Anyway, I love these boxes, these kits. It comes with a nice little tray. I love that. We'll just take this apart. We've got our sprues, our build guide, and then we've got our cards. So as always, we'll start with the instruction guide. So it says read this first. Before assembling, 
your miniatures please read through the instructions in this booklet carefully and retain them for future reference carefully remove the models from the frame asking an adult for assistance and push the models together as shown but I'd still recommend you probably need a mold line or a knife modeling knife hobby knife there's most likely mold lines from memory from other beast grave kits I've looked at and I still suggest using plastic glue unless you are a kid that just wants to play or whatever you, you might want to just do the push fit but if you're into Warhammer and you've got other kits you'll have plastic glue and all the hobby knives and stuff either way if you are new I'd still suggest getting uh, you're going to need clippers you're going to need a knife or a mold line scraping tool and some plastic glue it's just going to save hassle in case they were ever to come apart somehow that plastic glue is going to keep them together so no glue required but we just went through that so you get piece two and one they go together but a bit of glue around here would be nice sometimes as well for the more i guess advanced modelers or even just if you have any issues a lot of people clip these pegs off if you're going to glue because so i guess if you put the glue in there sometimes the glue wants to push the peg out i guess if that makes sense basically putting glue around the edges of both sides of this wolf so you cut the pegs off it just makes it easier and then it'll have this gap here where obviously his foot goes and you put his head on put his weapon on it's like a peg is a, it's like a peg again now some pegs I probably wouldn't recommend cutting off hopefully this doesn't confuse you but it's more I guess the parts that come together like this some pegs you may need like the one here just to give it a bit more stability and just hopefully that doesn't confuse you too much but yeah what an amazing looking gobbo on wolf love that absolutely love them same step both sides of the wolf come together looks like all his limbs are together on this one got the goblin with the bow he's got an awesome looking face that you shove on and then he's got it looks like a shield with his arrows look how awesome he looks his face this is more what i mean with cutting the pegs so sometimes you, you can dry fit just don't jam together otherwise you, you're basically doing the push fit but just slowly put it together see how you go you can cut these pegs down a bit because at the end of the day both sides are being glued together the plastic glue is going to seal this the edges what an awesome pose on him yeah these you but you glue them all together and then he comes up and onto his body looks like a bit of a weird looks like a bit of a weird kit he is like his head or his helmet's there you have all his gubbins and you put his face on after it goes under the helmet and onto the neck piece and what I'd recommend here yet again they say don't use glue normally you get this line here now you could use green stuff or putty normally if you get some Tamiya extra thin plastic cement once you put it all together normally if you put a bit in that hole there and just push it together normally it seals or makes this less visible the joining parts where you've joined the two pieces together normally I find that makes this less visible I've seen plenty of people they just leave it and when you paint it it just looks like obviously you, you have that hole there you can see where the two bits have joined normally it will hide that or at least as I said make it less visible 
less of a big hole and normally when you paint over it will hide it just that little bit more that's just a little tip for you as mentioned before I'm no expert at Underworlds but I'll go through the cards anyway Stab It what a name Ripper Narc Bad I love the art on these these are absolutely amazing Mean Eye he's the Bow fella. Now hopefully one day I'll be able to play this and either do a battle report or just talk about how I feel about the actual game itself. It'd be nice. So yeah, these have obviously a purpose each one when you pull a card. Pretty brutal looking wolves in the art. Nice. Such good art. Gonna have to go try and do paint scheme like this. Maybe added a little bit more gore to my wolves. Have a bit of blood around their mouths or something. Feed in time. Looks like a giant rat. Love how they had that Mongolian look to them. Kind of lost a lot of this look in Age of Sigma. I believe this is the Universal upgrade. The other one would have been the Snow Fang one. I don't know if these are unique to this deck, if it's a universal one or if you kind of get these in every box set, like a mixture so Obviously they have character or races from different packs like the elves and the ogres Looks like it'd be a really cool game though. Take a while I guess to learn the basics. And you'll have all these different cards and actions within the cards. And a lot of the elves in that one. Now let's take a look at the sprues. And look how detailed they are. Looks like these wolves don't have that much fur on them around their body parts, their limbs. That shield looks really nice. You see some teeth and little trinkets hanging off it. Look at that wolf face though. That's amazing. So much detail. If you've watched any of my other reviews for the Orc miniature range, the grots and all the grots you get on vehicles and stuff they nowhere near have that much detail and expression on them maybe some newer ones but just absolutely love that there's just so much detail on his little face like it's a smaller than a fingernail and it's just they jam-packed so much detail in them love the pose on this his arms arched and he's just shooting this or loading this arrow love the 
Love the bow. Another awesome looking shield, little teeth and whatnot on it. I say this a lot I guess, but can't wait to put these together and build and paint them. He looks like he's standing up. He must be Ripper. He looks like he's ready to launch or at least lunge while he's on the mount. Just that's that's awesome. Love that. Almost speechless. And that face as well. Love how his mouth's arched on one side. It must be the rest of Ripper. Then again, he's ready to launch into action. His wolf looks so good. Looks like a bit of his upper lip's been torn off. Now the old wolf riders used to always have wolf tails on their shields and obviously this is most likely what the fur on their hats are as well. Absolutely amazing, what a kit. And we've got our last wolf here. Then we've got the bow and arrow guy. Love it. It brings back so many memories, but also it's just... just if I was a kid now, I'd lose my mind. So as I said, these were so basic back then, the wolf riders. Nowhere near this detailed, and they just all looked well, quite bad, really, to be honest, but still absolutely loved them so I'd just lose it if I was a kid now probably like I am now kind of losing it but yeah I'd absolutely fall in love with these yeah this is that first one that we looked at in a booklet that had that big leg that you stick to it by the looks of it this leg goes elsewhere it looks like this one this one I believe was the second or third one in the booklet but then you've got that leg that attached to one of them, got the spear. And the last part is the bases. Now I love how Underworlds gives you, I guess it stops you from being creative and doing your own scenery or idea. But it's really nice to have all this sculpted detail into them. Looks like they're in a cave type environment with a spider all this rock. Goblins are known, night goblins are known to live in caves and just keep away from the sunlight. That's why they have robes on them. Their skin's really sensitive. But also goblins are known to be into spider venom. They have spider riders. They just have all sorts of rachnids on their side. And I love that. Don't, don't quite know what that is. What maybe a wolf or something almost looks a bit like a rat as well but I'm guessing it would probably be a wolf looks a bit like a canine skull but yeah love these texture bases it just gives you so much detail to paint into them and the last one, oh, snakes. They look nice. These cool looking snakes on the base. Painted some underworld stuff before. I painted a Nurgle guy. I painted a basically half animal, half elf. I forget what they're called. And I've painted a squig for the troll and squig kit. Yeah, I like doing the bases as well. I'll basically put the wolf on here, just slide them in slightly. You won't push them or glue them into place. It just gives you something to hold on to as you paint the wolf and the goblin. But then normally I'll take that apart 
and do the base and do them kind of separately just so you can get to all the detail without the wolf on top of it yeah that's a really nice kit absolutely love that kit it's great well, as always I hope you enjoyed the review and unboxing of Ripper's Snarl Fangs and I appreciate you watching this is G the Hyper Sapien, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.